is cold cowboy stew. Here we go. One can of tomato sauce, one can of green chilies, two cans of green chilies, three can of green chilies, can of rotel, can of stewed tomatoes, small bag of baby carrots, chop up a day onion, add it all in. It ain't cowboy stew without some heat, add a jalapeno. Chop up about nine red taters. All right, let's get our meat ready. Heat your pan up, add a little olive oil. Here we go. Just a quick sear and a quick seasoning and throw it in the stew mix. Help me out here, Dan. Woo! Now in here, I have two cups of water and two cups of beef broth heating up. All right, add it all in, beef juice and all. Add that beautiful mixture. Turn it. Almost forgot, add your little garlic. All right, brother Dan, hit him one more time. Set it to low. Lid on, let it roll all day. Come back for part two and we'll make some homemade Hey, what's up guys? Let's make homemade eggnog. Why buy store-bought eggnog when you can make it yourself? Grab a large mixing bowl and separate your egg yolks. Yo, be better than me with this part. As you can see, I struggled. <laughs> However, the second time around, it got better. Now you won't need egg whites for this recipe, so you could honestly toss them or eat them for breakfast. To your eggs, you're gonna pour in one cup of sugar. Mix until the consistency is light and creamy. And this process will go a lot faster with a hand mixer, FYI. All right, so see, look, this is how you want it. Like that, creamy, light, airy, that's what you want it to look like. Now grab a medium sized pot over medium heat, pour in two cups of milk. You can use whatever type of milk you really wanna use for this. Then you're gonna also need one cup of heavy cream. Don't forget a pinch of salt. All right, so unpopular opinion, but I honestly think nutmeg really doesn't do anything for most recipes, but for this one, honestly agree it does. So add half a teaspoon of that. Bring this to a low simmer, not a boil. Now I'm spiking mine and pouring in some Quavosier, but for those of you who can't drink or don't drink, drinking it as is works just fine. Now for the purposes of this video and because I like doing the most, we're gonna actually uh, top it off with some cinnamon. It was honest. I'm gonna show you how to make crab rangoons in less than 10 minutes. But forget the crab, let's just do a little garlic, ginger, soy sauce, and green onion. Make sure to cut them thin. Mix all that together and grab your wonton wrappers. Put a little bit in your wonton wrapper and fold it up. Here you go if you wanna see it a little closer. While you're at it, you may as well make a bunch. Drop those boys in some 350 degree oil until they they look like this. Plate it like Pewe where you dump out way too much sweet chili sauce that you didn't make, place them on top and immediately eat them so you make sure to burn your mouth. The perfect holiday mimosa. Take water and sugar, boil it until it's completely dissolved, rinse your cranberries off, throw them in for a few minutes just until they get a little soft about to pop. Get that champagne ready and then you'll go back to your cranberries. Evenly coat them in sugar and then stick them on a toothpick. Pour a little bit of cranberry juice, the rest champagne, and then top them with those cranberries. You can even put them inside if you want a little bit more pizzazz. Cheers and enjoy. Swiss cheese and mushroom burger. That's a butter, red onion. Go ahead and work that in for a bit and then add your mushrooms about five minutes later. Garlic paste, salt, and pepper. Work that in for a while, another five minutes. Add a cup of beef broth. Let that go ahead and simmer, work its way down. And then you're gonna add some heavy whipping cream. Go ahead and simmer that off for about five to eight minutes. Get some oil down on that griddle. Throw the patties down. And you're going to go ahead and let that cook for about five minutes and then flip and look at that crust. Oh my goodness. Toast those buns. That's two slices of Swiss cheese. And go ahead and get those patties on those nice and toasty buns. And that's pretty simple. You're going to add that mushroom sauce on top. And let me tell you, this is probably the most delicious Swiss cheese mushroom sauce burger you'll ever have in your life. Go ahead and make this and let me know. How to make my Grinch Frappuccino. This is like a white chocolate thin mint. Okay, I'm so excited. So we have one and a half cups of ice, three fourths cup of milk, one shot of espresso, and then of course, white chocolate pudding powder, just one huge scoop, one tablespoon of peppermint syrup, and then two squirts of our white chocolate sauce. One, two. And then squirt in some green food coloring and then blend it. Pour it in our cup. Add some whipped cream. Holiday sprinkles. Stick in your... Here's how I make my grandma's cheesecake recipe. Add six eight ounce packages of softened cream cheese to a large mixing bowl. Next, add six eggs, a cup and a half of granulated sugar, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and two teaspoons of lemon juice. Start to mix all of the ingredients together with a whisk. Then, take a hand mixer and mix it until it's completely smooth. Make sure you use a bigger mixing bowl than I did. 
Pour the mixture evenly into two store-bought graham cracker crusts. Bake this for 30 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit and set aside for one hour. In a separate mixing bowl, mix together a quart of sour cream, one cup of sugar, and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Top your cheesecake with this mixture and bake an additional seven minutes at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Let your cheesecake set in the fridge for at least a few hours, but overnight is best. We served our cheesecake with a cherry topping. Do you love drinking in Disney? Consider this post your recipe guide and get ready to screenshot because I'm giving you the recipe to some of the best cocktails in Disney World. Starting off with the Tokyo Sunset, you can find this one in the Japan Pavilion, and it's by far one of my favorite cocktails in Disney. In Animal Kingdom, I have to get the Ningumu Punch from Dawa Bar. It is made with Disney's famous Pog Juice, and it's delicious. Woody's Lunchbox is one of the best quick services in Hollywood Studios, and their grown-ups lemonade is outstanding. Another great Disney drink is the Cantaloupe from the China Pavilion. It's light and refreshing. And of course, we have to talk about the Violet Sake, a true classic from the Japan Pavilion. And I'll leave the link to the Desert Syrup in my bio. Be sure to follow along for more Disney drinks and let me know what drink you want to see me recreate next. I've got a drink for you today called the Little Frosty. Traditionally, when you make these in little beer mugs, they look just like a poured beer with a foamy head. Ingredient cookie. The first ingredient you'll need is cake mix. You can use whatever flavor you want. If you want a chocolate cookie, use chocolate cake mix. I'm using lemon today because it was just so good, I could not stop eating it. One package cake mix. One egg. One eight ounce tub of whooping cream. And mix this all up. Batter should look something like this. It's pretty sticky. This is my baking sheet. Now I'm just going to take some scoops of the batter and put it on. It's optional, but I'm going to put powdered sugar on mine. Bake it in the oven at 350 for 10 to 12 minutes. I just took them out of the oven and I'm going to let them cool and I'll be right back. Mm. Today we're going to do a pan seared fish. We're doing cod and we're going to smother it in a saute of vegetables. It's super clean and you're going to love it. Let's cook some fish. Fish, oregano, artichoke heart, fresh tomato, red onion, half a cup of dry white wine, full cup of chicken stock, a bunch of spinach, olive oil, salt, pepper. Get your pan hot, cover it in oil in the bottom, put the fish in the center, put the veggies around the outside, but hang on to the spinach, hang on to the stock, hang on to the wine. Flip the fish, add the wine. Careful with the salt because the chicken stock is salty. Chicken stock, oregano, boom, around like that. And now top it with the spinach till it's wilted. Plate it up like this and then eat it like this. Oh, come on. <laughs> so good. Here's a quick tutorial on how to get super moist, really delicious, not dried out chicken. Take garlic powder, super cold water, put it in a Ziploc bag with your chicken, pour some sea salt, just a sprinkle, zip up the Ziploc bag, throw it in the fridge for 30 minutes to two hours, and you just created a brine. Enjoy. Today is my birthday, and I want mango ginger sidecars. I'm going to start by making a mango infused cognac. Start by adding a cup of cognac and a cup of chopped mango to a blender. When it's smooth, strain out the solids and add it to a mason jar. Now let's build the cocktail. Start by adding two ounces of your mango-infused cognac to a cocktail shaker. Next, add an ounce of ginger liqueur. Then add three quarters of an ounce of fresh lime juice. It has to be fresh. Next, coat the rim of your glass with lime. Then coat the rim in sugar. Shake with plenty of ice! And strain into your sugar-rimmed glass. Garnish. And enjoy! Portuguese custard tarts, let's go. In a saucepan, combine the milk, cream, and the vanilla bean. And bring to the boil. In a bowl, mix together your eggs, flour, and sugar. Slowly mix in the milk and strain. Return the custard to the heat and cook until it thickens. Grab your puff pastry. Now you can either make your own or you can be lazy like me and use store brought. Sprinkle over cinnamon sugar and roll up. Cut into even sized pieces, roll into discs, then push into a greased muffin tin. Fill with two tablespoons of the custard and bake at 240 for 10 minutes. Boom, look at these bad boys. Dig in and enjoy. I used to eat hamburger helper a lot when I was in college and I wanted to try and make it low carb. So this is what I came up with. Brown some hamburger meat. I added garlic powder, onion powder, and some salt. Drain the oil, then added ketchup. 
then a half a stick of cream cheese, a few glunks of heavy cream, and I let that melt down and mix it around. Added some regular shredded cheese, I mixed that into it, and then I added cabbage. And it probably could have been done right here, but I decided to throw it into the oven at 350 degrees for 30 minutes, and it came out perfect.